a rich bride is kidnapped from a wedding to get a ransom from her relatives. The film begins with a series of shots, seemingly loosely connected to each other. To each other. The only important detail that unites them is the presence of green paint, with which people, windows and even the rainwater are smeared. In the next scene, an elderly man sits in the hospital next to his his wife lying in bed. The staff appears and clears the place, escorting out the non-seriously ill. The wounded are brought into the wards the wounded. The hospital corridors are filled with anxious people, some of whom are also stained with green paint. The camera flies over the bodies' bodies on the floor, stained with paint and blood. Judging by the open eyes, they're all dead. In the distance you can hear the crackle of machine gun fire in the distance. The scene shifts to Mary Ann and Alan's wedding. The newlyweds are congratulated by Daniel, the bride's brother. Their happiness. At this time, new guests arrive at the mansion. They tell us that it's chaos in the streets. Chaos on the streets, even at the airport. They wouldn't let them leave the airport. The parents of the bride and groom are concerned that an important guest hasn't arrived, the judge. The absence of such an influential person even suggests, albeit jokingly, the idea of postponing the celebration to a more convenient time. The wife's mother hides the envelope with the gift money in the bedroom safe. And then wants to wash her hands, but the water is green. Excited, she calls her husband to show him this, but when they return, the water is already a normal shade. Meanwhile, the servants of the poor citizens are discussing the costume of one of the young men, Christian, the employers for the event gave him clothes which were a little too large for him. His mother, Marta, is told by her mistress to look among the servants' belongings for green paint, someone has smuggled it into the party. Meanwhile, other important guests arrive, in particular Minister Victor. As a wedding present, he speaks of a building permit which is very important for the business of the bride's parents. The bride? But talk of work is interrupted by the businessman's young wife. And they go out to have fun. As another envelope goes into the safe, the bride notes that they are making money at her wedding. And the gift is part of the bribes the father pays to the visiting officials. Another couple of guests arrive at the party slightly flustered. The reason is the green paint, they were splattered with it on the way, which doesn't hide from the, the excited looks of the attendees. The tainted woman is hurriedly led away by her hostess to clean up and not embarrass the guests. But the incident has not gone unnoticed by the minister's secretary, the visitor's car has been sprayed with paint a couple of blocks away. The guards advise them to leave immediately and drive the cars away. The official and his wife, children and babysitters sneak out of the event. At the same time, an elderly man, Rolando, comes to the door. Rolando, an elderly former employee of the hosts. He asks his former employers to borrow some money for his wife's surgery. The landlady collects a little money from the men, promising to collect the missing amount tomorrow. The old man says hello to Marianne, whom he brought up as a girl, she asks her brother, who's into drugs with drugs, and asks her brother the missing money. But Danielle, after handing over a few thousand more and tries to chase the old man away. Marianne sees this and asks him to stay until she gets from the safe with the gifts in the envelope. But the mother has changed the password or mother changed the password beforehand. Neither my father nor my brother knows the new password, which saddens the good-hearted girl. Pulling her credit card out of her purse, Marianne discovers that the old man is gone. She turns to Christian, the servant boy, to show her the way to Rolando. As they leave, another politically important guest another politically important guest arrives, the judge. The lawyer has another wedding planned for today, so she needs to quickly all the congratulatory formalities. But the mother can't find the birthday girl, so she tells Martha to find her daughter. Marianne's car is turned around, and the streets are blocked because of the masses because of the mass unrest. They have to take a detour and listen to the alarming reports on the radio. At this time, the plebs, the common people, smeared with frightening of the rich man's paint. The hosts call the guards, seeing the uninvited guests, and being quite frightened of such proximity with the electorate. Among the proletarians there are armed men, and they, in spite of all exhortations, they open fire, opening up the years-long rift of class enmity of class enmity and social stratification. Marianne's father is shot and the guard, himself a commoner, uses his service weapon against his employers. The guests are driven to their rooms, only the hostess is dragged to the safe by the guard. The servants expropriate the ill-gotten gains from the expropriators. After getting the code to the safe, the guard shoots the woman in cold blood and cold blood and puts a bullet in the back of her head. 
the lower class is having a great time in the upper class house, while Martha warns her son and Marianne that it is dangerous to return. At gunpoint, the invaders take everything they can from the rich, including money orders their remittances, clothes and jewels. So there's a normal redistribution of wealth. On the roads, the commoners there throwing green paint, a kind of a symbol of spontaneous revolution. Christian offers to sit down because he knows the poor neighborhoods he knows better than the rich girl. The guy hides Marianne himself in the backseat away from prying eyes. Soon they reach to Rolando's house, where they hide the car in the garage. The old man asks his nephew why he brought the rich girl, to which he tells him that she wanted to take his wife to the hospital. Meanwhile, the phones all over all over the city are going out of business. People take to the streets and continue their rampage until dark, looting and setting an arson. Marianne, in order to avoid Marianne, is left in the house for the night a room on the second floor. The radio reports that the army is trying to restore order, but so far it's not going not going too well. Martha, Christian's mother, leaves from Marianne's house, where burglars have left a mess and a pile of corpses. On the streets, the confrontation between ordinary people and law enforcement and law enforcement continue all night long. All night long. In the morning we managed to get to the house where the wedding took place. The house where the wedding was taking place managed to get by ambulances. The wounded are taken to the hospital. Marianne listens on the radio the news reports, she wants to go home. Christian goes out on a reconnaissance mission to see to see if she can be safely to see if it's safe. But the soldiers literally outside the house, they catch him. When they find out that he needs to take to take a rich girl home, the soldiers take Marianne promising to take her to her family, and they tell the boy to stay at home. However, on the way, in the back of the truck in the back of a truck. The heroine's phone, earrings. And a watch. Meanwhile, the city is slowly from the night's unrest. And the streets are full of barricades and corpses, the roads are blocked by military roadblocks, and in the distance in the distance, sporadic gunfire can be heard. And the brave ones who dare to go outside are moving exclusively by running. The military stacks the corpses in piles, walking among the dead among the dead with their machine guns. Martha successfully makes it home, where she is welcomed by her son. Marianne is brought to a closed camp where other prisoners. Most of them, rich people and children of wealthy parents. The soldiers draw numbers on their foreheads on their foreheads, followed by interviews, names, addresses, relatives. They treat them without any a lot of respect, and to the men in the they're just a source of potential profit and and ransom. Daniel, Marianne's brother, at the hospital is approached by a representative of the funeral home to arrange to arrange a funeral for his mother and wife. The news continues to be filled with stories about the army's opposition against the rioters. Daniel, along with Alan, is turning to Minister Victor for help in finding Marianne. Forbidden to go to the press, he entrusts their case to Jen. To General Oreb, commander of the troops. Soldiers in the abduction camp, meanwhile, are busy raping prisoners. And Marianne gets it, too, while her family makes funeral arrangements. The authorities impose a curfew a curfew, and civilians are only allowed to move on the streets for only a couple of hours in the morning and evening to get to and from work. A riot is a riot, but manufacturing itself, but production will not produce itself. And in doing so, the unnecessary aspects of life such as hospitals for the poor are quite closed, as opposed to clinics for the rich, from which were the injured father Daniel and Marianne. A minister visits the man at home. Victor, who promises to find for his missing daughter. It turns out that since the beginning of the riots and her disappearance and her disappearance, it's been a month. Wearied by the shortage of servants, the family wants to get the owner's nurse even the owner's nurse of the house, despite the fact she doesn't like the misuse of her talents and education. People kidnapped by soldiers are recording video messages to their families, asking them to pay the ransom demanded so they can finally be released. One night, Rolando goes out out of the house to call a doctor for his sick wife. But just as he was approaching to the roadblock blocking the exit from the poor neighborhood, the soldiers interrupt him with a single one shot interrupts his life. Next, his wife dies without waiting his wife dies and Christian, a day later, attends their funeral. Daniel receives a call from the kidnappers with a recording of her sister's voice. The bandits want the ransom. The ransom, 10 million pesos. By giving the victims a mass to wash the victims in mass the soldiers are discussing who gets what share of the ransom, but even among them there's no unanimity, each one is trying to cheat the other. 
The military, dissatisfied with their small the military who kidnapped Marianne, returns to Christiane's house, where the heroine found the heroine. They demand a ransom. 800 pesos, for which it is necessary to contact Mariana's family. While the other prisoners are tortured, Christian is trying to find a way to get through the roadblocks to the home employers. He manages to find permission to work for himself and his mother, which allows them to leave of the neighborhood. Daniel and Alan address the minister and the general with videotape of the prisoners' torture and demanding ransom. According to the head of the of the security forces, this data should be enough to identify the perpetrators. Upon reaching the family home Christian tells Daniel to Daniel that the soldiers are demanding for his sister's ransom. After consulting with his father, Daniel allocates the necessary the money without ever calling the minister and his tame general. While they think about how the servants to get the money through the roadblocks, Marianne becomes witnesses of prisoner one prisoner is taken out of his cage and paid ransom. But just as he was being let out, a gunshot is fired, suggesting that the prisoner never saw his freedom. Christian and Marta return home in the evening, carrying the money under their clothes. There are soldiers waiting for them outside the house. After receiving their money, they change the deal. The first amount is only the advance, tomorrow they need another a million pesos tomorrow. When Danielle finds out about this and his father, they decide that the servants are in league with the kidnappers and wants to cash in on them. After that, the rich men get in touch to contact Minister Victor, accusing Christian and his mother of the kidnapping. In the evening, a special detachment of General Arab is waiting for soldiers at Marta's house while Christian lures them inside. The general tells them to take off the masks, after which the SWAT team loads the servants and soldiers into cars and drive with them two to the prison camp. Inside, they find Mary Ann among dozens of prisoners, Mary Ann and take her outside. They are already kneeling there the soldiers, tied up in the dirty business, realizing what they're in, some of them sobbing silently. After the girl is escorted past and put into shots rang out and the blood stained by the bloody business, the soldiers are executed one by one. Special forces dousing their bodies with gasoline and set them on fire to cover covering their tracks. Wiping the shameful number Marianne is taken to Christian's house to Christian's house. The girl is taken in sight and the guy who saved her sits on the bed, waiting. There's a silent of a gun with a silencer going off, that makes him flinch. A special forces soldier walks into the bedroom and holds out a gun to him, and then leads him out of the room. Christiane manages to notice the murdered Marianne in the bathroom, and then the gunman shoots him in his head, and he drops dead. In the next scene. Victor calls Daniel. The guy's being taken to Christian's house, where the general is already. In the final scene, the minister, the general and Marianne's father are watching the death penalty of several criminals, among whom is Marta. Executed for the kidnapping and murder of the girl, to whom the law enforcement law enforcement covered up the crimes of the Mexican army during the popular unrest. So they wouldn't have to investigate crimes and corruption, and not inadvertently come out themselves. And that's the end of the movie to a brave march.